The Kagame inauguration ceremony set for Monday will be attended by several heads of state from across Africa. Rwandans voted overwhelmingly to re-elect President Kagame during the 9th August poll with 93% of voters endorsing him. Kagame will be starting his second and constitutionally final seven-year presidential term. While in Kigali, President Kibaki will also attend a heads of state and government consultative forum on the Millennium Development Goals. Meanwhile, Higher Education Minister William Ruto says discussion of contentious issues in the new constitution should remain very much part of the implementation of the constitution. Ruto says this will help factor in divergent views highlighted in the just concluded referendum campaigns. It is our right as citizens to take our place in the implementation of the new constitution and take it to its logical conclusion. However, speaking separately, Immigration Minister Otieno Kajuang is accusing his higher education counterpart of misleading the nation over the visit of Sudanese President Omar al-Bashir. Kajuang said the cabinet was never informed of the visit, but had instead been told that Vice President Salva Kiir would represent Sudan. Ruto has said that the cabinet had duly been informed about Bashir's planned attendance of the promulgation ceremony. It is not true and, and it is reckless. Because I think he is trying to be smack a certain other politicians. The president has the prerogative to invite whoever he wants to invite into the country and to protect his visitor. But to suggest that we were informed as a cabinet is to lie. And Kanu Vice Chairman Gideon Moy is asking the government to vet all internally displaced people before resettling or compensating them. Speaking in Nandi, Moy said that fake IDPs were trickling into camps in an attempt to benefit from the government's resettlement program. Kama wajapatana shamba rift valley. Last summer to find a vetting to akikishe. How are you The former Baringo Central Member of Parliament cited the Mao and post-election violence victims as among the two groups that have been infested by persons claiming compensation even though they were not genuine victims.